How's it going, all you fellow bird fans? Um, welcome back to another video. Thank you again for stopping by at my channel. Um, before I begin anything, I'd just like to say, uh, drop a like if you like seeing this kind of bird content. I know I've been given a lot of it, and so far people have been responding really well. So I'm going to continue doing that, so please um, drop a like if you'd like me to keep doing that. Also, drop a comment if there's anything that you'd like to see, as always. I'm completely open to doing whatever the heck you guys want, because that's really what the whole point of this is anyways. So, if there's anything that you'd like to see in particular, let me know. Without further ado, I kind of wanted to keep this video lighthearted. I know, definitely, there's some pretty bad forecasting as far as COVID-19 goes for the next week or two or so. And I know it's all been kind of doom and gloom. I know it's been hitting me really hard, and it's probably not the only one who's hitting really hard. Um, so I kind of wanted to keep this just lighthearted and as goofy as possible, and do a species profile on what might be the goofiest bird of them all, the American woodcock. First things first, taxon taxonomically speaking, just so we can get a little bit of science out of the way before we go into why the, goof the woodcock is the goofiest bird of them all. Um, woodcocks are part of the family Scolopacity that lumps them in with sandpipers. So like if you know, if you're acquainted at all with... Um, Greater yellow legs, lesser yellow legs, solitary sandpiper, spotted sandpiper. I'm just listing all the ones that I personally see a lot in Ohio, so feel free to add any other sandpipers that you're acquainted with. It's related to those guys. And you can kind of see that just based on, like, body shape. Um, sandpipers, a lot of times we see that really um, kind of compressed body shape. Um, a lot of the sandpipers we see having a lot longer necks than the woodcock, but... Um, this guy, not so much. And then that extremely long bill is usually a pretty good tell as far as sandpipers go. Going up in the list for taxonomy, just uh, briefly in the order credit for me, that lumps them in with also gulls, terns, and uh, plovers too. And plovers, if you're a Chicagoan at all, really big in the news last year with um, Monty and Rose, the breeding piping plovers for the first time in, I believe, like 50 years as far as on the Chicago lakefront, which was awesome. Completely took the world by storm. I'm completely happy about it. They even shut down a music festival, which I actually want to do another video on, um, just kind of describing that scenario later. So these guys are kind of distantly related to those guys as well. Main story, kind of related to a lot of water birds, to be honest, which is interesting because these guys don't really hang out by water much. Um, you find them in shrubs, forests, and all that, which comes into play a little bit later. Um... And I personally, and all my even non-birder friends, love the woodcock. Um, woodcock is kind of a bit of a meme, to be honest. Uh, a lot of people love them just because they're goofy, and they really are. And that's why I kind of want to do a video on them today. Not so much science-based, but just on like some of the funny things about them, because I think they're hilarious, and I know seeing them is... It's really awesome to see woodcocks. It's also really funny to see woodcocks half the time. So I kind of want to just do a little bit of information about that. And to start out with, um, to just kind of sum up why the way people feel about woodcocks, the first identification tip that Thayer Birding Software itself gives the woodcock is as dumpy. And I really couldn't agree more. Like this guy, you know, if you're understanding what I'm talking about when I'm talking about like the sandpiper kind of body, you know that like, it inherently looks a little bit awkward and goofy just because the proportions are a little bit off. And the woodcock basically saw any other sandpiper and said, what if I were you guys but without a neck? Because if we scroll down here, we'll see that even when it's like neck is fully extended, that's the most you get. Um, so it's got this really odd, compressed look, really goofy looking to be honest, and there's really not much more to say about that. And so I think Dumpy is actually kind of the perfect way to describe that. Mimi, Derpy, anything like that, kind of like how I described Cackling Goose, pretty much applies to the Woodcock as well. Another thing that's really goofy about these guys, and honestly, Sandpipers in general, is just that really intensely long beak. Um, sandpipers, the way that they eat food is their probers. So they'll probe through whatever substrate they have. Usually, when it comes to Sandpipers, you're going to find them in, take a guess, sand and so they'll probe through the dirt um, substrate sand whatever you get and they use the tip of their bills because their bills are actually super duper sensitive 
So they can feel around for invertebrates, bugs, any kind of whatever they're looking for to eat. They probe around through whatever they're living on and they find food. So that's how sandpipers find food. And if you remember, I did say that woodcocks, rather than being found on like beachfronts near lake shores and stuff like that, they're actually found kind of like in woody areas. And the big main difference and the really cool adaptation that woodcocks have that makes them so special, which is one of the many things, is that they can actually op move their beak in like different places going up and down the beak. Their beaks are actually pretty flexible. And the reason that's so important is because whereas most sandpipers are able to dig around pretty easily in sand, you know, sand's not super hard to move, so you don't really need that kind of added oomph power or anything like that, dirt is a lot harder to move. And if a woodcock had to open its mouth from up here, if its beak were halfway in the dirt, probably wouldn't be able to do so. Really hard to move that dirt, and you'd have to have a ridiculously strong opening power on your beak to be able to move all that dirt. Which, honestly, most most animals don't have really strong opening power anyways. So that's kind of like non-existent. So these guys are able to open their beak from wherever inside the dirt they are. So like, let's say the dirt is up to this line here. They can open their beak from in here so that they don't have to worry about it here. And that's really awesome because that allows them to probe around just like any, any other sandpiper would, but in a different environment. You can actually see a picture of this way down here. If you'll look, you can see it looks like that's really almost like flared out in a way. Whereas like, obviously with a closed beak, these guys have pretty straight bills. So you can kind of see even in this picture right here how flexible the woodcock's beak is. And that's just one really cool thing about them. And now on to more of the meme review portion of the American woodcock. Um, for starters, one of the colloquial nicknames for the American woodcock is the timber doodle. Um, so if the name woodcock wasn't funny enough to you, timber doodle is another really... I don't know. I think that's hilarious. I think that's funny. And I get their name from the fact that, obviously, you can kind of see, find them around timber stands and all that. A lot of people find them in the forest. So, like, a duh. Another thing that's really funny about these guys is their call. Um, woodcocks, as you can see here, if you remember from the last video of mnemonics, and that's... Um, how to kind of put words to a bird song. And some birds, you get some really cool bird songs, like the barred owl is who cooks for you. Like, that translates to actual words. Um, American goldfinch, sometimes you can translate to, like, potato chip or something like that. As far as woodcock goes, there's no real word to describe it other than paint, which is seems funny enough on paper. Like, that's kind of dumb sounding. But in reality, it's even funnier to watch. Because these guys sound hilarious. Um, and I'll throw up a video on it in a second. Actually, this might be it right here. So this is a video of them walking, which is another really funny thing. And if we get further in a second... So that's that pink call that I was talking about. And that's honestly hilarious, in my opinion. I know anytime you want to make anybody, any room laugh, you throw on either a video of them kind of tensing up and screaming paint outward to the world, usually does the trick. Or if you really want to confuse somebody, don't show them video and just throw that kind of audio out there because it's hilarious. Um, it, it's funny. It's derpy sounding. You know, I don't know what you would expect from a bird that looks like this. I can't say I would expect that, but I can't say I wouldn't expect it either. So, like, it seems like it fits the bill, another bird pun for you, pretty well. And then, <clears throat> another really funny thing about woodcocks is that they have this really goofy little bob strut, is what people call it. And that was kind of what was playing at the start of this video. And the reason I think that that's so funny is because that video, video of them doing their bob strut kind of walk can be overlaid by any song and it would fit the song. Um, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube because these guys actually went viral about two or three years ago. I think it was 2017 for somebody overlaying music to
to a walking woodcock. And I think Staying Alive was the first music um, that was overlaid to it. And it has since grown into almost like a global phenomenon. I actually created a playlist on YouTube that is a public playlist. So I'll drop a link to that in the description in this video. That is just a ton of different videos of woodcock walking and doing this little dance to um, different songs. And it works every single time. And every single time, it is hilarious. I mean, just imagine this playing to... Um, Whatever song you want. Just, you know, they're going at it. Like, it's they're having a good time. They're here for a good time. And honestly, that's super relatable. And then, off the memeing, but just because I think this is really cool, and the reason that I wanted to do a Woodcock profile in the first place is because they're doing this right now. But Woodcock's had this really, really cool mating behavior that you don't really get to see often a lot or don't hear talked about a lot in a lot of um, TV shows or something like that. Most of the times, if you're watching shows about bird mating, you know, okay, you're not really watching shows about in general. But, like, you go on to these nature documentaries like Planet Earth and something like that, and you see these gorgeous birds of paradise, and you see these wacky, you know, displays, and you're like, wow, that's just crazy. And we actually have kind of something like that similar with these guys, because these guys take it to the next level quite literally, to the next level. Um, they're actually doing their mating rituals right now, right back where I go at school in Cincinnati. So this is kind of the reason, this is what spurred the kind of thought process, because the bird club was supposed to go and see woodcocks doing their mating rituals. We're not able to anymore. Thanks, coronavirus. So that's why that kind of spurred this video as well. But the woodcocks mating ritual is really cool, and the male, what they'll do, is they'll make a big flight really high up in the air. Um, and then they'll kind of just, I don't want to say free fall, because it's not like, you know, when I think free fall, I think of a peregrine falcon diving after something out of the sky. It's not like that, but they kind of parachute back and forth and kind of just float back down to Earth, and their wings make this really, really cool fluttering sound, all while making that goofy little paint call. There's a really cool video of this that I will show you guys once we get through the dancing. Um, and it's just a really cool display to be able to see. And this kind of leads into that. So we got the paints and all that going on. Never thought I'd say that out loud. So this guy will take off. As you can see, he's making his big loop. And then he just kind of falls. And that fluttering sound is actually their wings. That's not the bird itself. So then it kind of falls back to Earth. And that's the end of that video. Um, there's a lot of cool videos on it on YouTube if you want to go look up. Um, but it's really just such a cool thing to look at in real life. I'm admittedly pretty bummed that we weren't able to, but I know it'll be my mission. Um, and yeah. If you guys have any woodcocks around you that might be breeding, I highly recommend you go out and see it. It's right at dusk, so like you can kind of see the shadowing falling down. It's just such a super cool thing to see. Why Another reason why it's one of my favorite birds of all time. So, kind of in conclusion, woodcock is a really, really cool bird. Really, really funny bird. Really, really derpy bird. Really, really meme bird. But nonetheless, a really cool, interesting bird that if you want to get anybody into birds is a really good gateway bird into birding. I know most of my friends who aren't into birding love the woodcock anyways, because it really is just a national treasure. Um, without, with that all said, thank you guys for watching another video. Like I said, I wanted to keep this one short and uplifting, not super science heavy like some of the other ones have been, just because I want to put a smile on your guys' faces, and birds are a great way to do that. Thank you again for watching. I really appreciate all your views and all your support. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope you guys are staying healthy as well. I know the next whatever is looking pretty rough so far. So I hope you guys are staying healthy, staying happy, and keeping your mental state definitely as high as you possibly can. Thank you guys for hanging out. And I always, happy birding, everybody.